So I'm with Leslie from Wizicom, and we're going to talk quickly about the very new MTP60, which yep. is coming out. It's already came out. It came out uh, three months ago, pretty okay. much, beginning of 2022. Brilliant. And there's some pretty cool features with this. Leslie's with us where we're doing the URSA workshop here in Spain. We're in Madrid at the minute, and we've been using these for the workshop, and they sound really, really clean. And I think I just wanted to ask you about this because this transmitter has got an insanely broad wide band. I mean, your MTP40s operated from... 470 663 in the latest version. 470 so, Which was already the widest uh, yeah. available bandwidth on a body pack transmitter. And this one is 470 11, uh, sorry, 1075. So it covers the full UHF bandwidth, plus some specific bands for US market, Japan market, and the DME for UK. So that's over 500 megahertz 470 to 1075 and the radio mics i use go from 606 to 640 oh, they're about 40 me mega megawatts mega yeah. megahertz so that's a massive range that's so traveling and dme is the new frequency we can we can use in the uk yeah. which airplanes use right to locate when they travel right so that's correct is, yeah it's a, it's a fixed band it was asked by, uh, by one of the major broadcaster from uk mm -hmm if there was any chance of developing this. And we did that with Raycom, our partner in, in mm -hmm. UK together. We found out uh, a solution to make this possible it actually mm -hmm. worked pretty well. And now it's becoming more and more popular, cool. especially in the UK. You know, having this possibility makes the whole system way more flexible. Yeah. So, you know, you have always have a, like a backup solution. And um, this has got, uh, it's got this little button there that you click down, lift it up. At the minute it's got two double A's, but you can also put in a rechargeable. Yep. Yeah, that's correct. There's a lithium rechargeable battery. It's the same we basically use for body packs, receivers for IMs or the MPR for those who use already basic on the MPR 52 already has the mm. same uh, body pack. So if you had a fully charged lithium battery, how long would you get also recording? Because it's got an SD card as well for 32-bit for, for, for yeah. float or 24-bit recording on, on the device. So how many hours would you get with well, it, transmitting, recording? Yeah, I mean, the recorder cuts about two hours of the battery life by mm -hmm. itself. So depending on the power you're transmitting, of course, there are different uh, ranges. So with the lithium battery packs, you'd be around 12, 12 hours. Without recording, uh, you, you cut down by two hours, twelve and a half. Um, That's recording a lot. At 20, yeah, 20 minutes. That's a whole working day on one set of batteries, recording yeah, and transmitting. Lithium, yeah. Oh, cool. It's a really sturdy build. Um, and there's some pretty cool features on this, which are pretty unique as well with the Bluetooth. Yep. So, uh, from what I understand, you're going to be able to pull out, pull out your phone, go to the Wizicom app, which is going to be released at some point, so, which will allow you to look at all of the devices within a within like a how many yards of you? Like, I mean, it it integrates a, a so called a long range Bluetooth module, so it's 100 milliwatts power on on the Bluetooth, which compared to other similar body packs transmitter, they normally use six milliwatts. So this mm -hmm. is. Uh, much more power so officially yeah. they say several hundred meters i would say probably in the real world application you can easily get a hundred more than 100 meters coverage which is that's pretty quite insane million. yeah with yeah bluetooth. for bluetooth when usually you're having problems between your phone and your earpiece that's yeah. a massive range yeah. and usually it doesn't go through walls at all right no i was using this uh, mm -hmm. last week and i was getting a body pack that was literally on the second right. floor i was in the in the down floor and what that means for us is that you'll be able to use an app which you can tell, you would be able to find out where someone is physically in a building. So you would actually kind of get a kind of location yep. on where they are. And then even then you could say, if somebody goes beyond a certain point, then their mic should mute or their pack should sleep. Or are there like features that you can tune, tell it what yeah, to do? Yeah, there is. Yeah, these are, let's, let's, let's split the two things. Mm -hmm. There is the, the, like the app, which is doing the remote control, you can start and stop recording. And this is used mm -hmm. through the mobile phone or the, iP the iPad or tablet. Mm. And you're gonna mute a mute, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna spread, the idea is to spread also time code through that. So many features will come uh, cool. through the time. Then there is the positioning part, which is still using Bluetooth, but yeah. it's slightly different because you need to set up uh, your own like Wi-Fi antenna system. You, mm -hmm. you built up your own network, you know, mm -hmm. let's say an indoor, typical indoor application like theaters or studios or reality shows. And that's also thanks to another software, which is developed by a, by a third company. So mm -hmm. it's like an integration software right. that you can have actually position. You have the right. mapping and you do all the features you were saying. So you have come sort of automation actions directly on the yeah. way back. 
so the, so the basic fundamentals from uh, the for without setting up the the aerial distribution are you can turn the recorder on and off remotely and you yep. can change the gain remotely change the gain change the frequency yeah. then you will able yeah. to send the, the new frequency from the app mm -hmm. to the transmitter so that's that's yeah. going to be really useful of course when uh, suddenly something happened to and you let's say i want to jam this with time code what's the sy system for that at the moment we have the the typical um, uh yeah time code yeah. is done through the audio input connector mm -hmm. so what you need to do is just plugging into this is a standard lemo tripping connector mm -hmm. and then you enter the record menu and you have jam so we're gonna grab the source from whatever it can be a, mm -hmm. a tentacle or sound devices yeah, yeah. whatever is the source you just jam it like that so you, you do a physical jam and is there a way as they are all communicating over bluetooth is there a way to for one to just then tell all the other ones what the time code is, so you don't have to manually physically plug. Well, not now. Uh, now, for yeah. the moment, the time code is done unit by unit. Yeah. But we are we are you know developing through the app and using mm -hmm. all these technologies to mm -hmm. find what's the best solution. We're also in contact with other companies which yeah. has focused on time code and see if we can manage yeah. to to do something together. So that would be great because I know it's it's painful when you're on set and you have sixteen body yeah. packs or ten <laughs> body packs of time yeah. code. So um, we're aware of that. So this is one of the key new features we're uh, we working on. That's a pretty cool feature. This is really changing the game for what you can do with radio mics from a very basic setup to quite incredible things. But you also mentioned something really cool with being able to fit an awful lot of radio mics in a very small bandwidth. Yeah. I mean, this has got over 500 mega, megawatts of, sorry, megahertz of bandwidth, but you can say, like, say that you only had 10 megahertz to fit 30 radio mics. Uh, normally that would be our oh, we can't fit 10 radio mics from 606 to 614 how is there anything about these that lets you do more yeah well we have two technologies that actually they have been they we have to say we moved them from the mtp40 to the 60 mm. so they were already available on the previous tx and you got the narrowband modulation which is something you can select and it's going to basically reduce the amount of bandwidth needed for your carrier to be mm. transmitted and you go for the band occupation goes down to 50 percent mm. by only cutting the audio at 17 kilohertz so basically you won't even hear the difference yeah. this is a big thing because normally when you talk about narrow band people is used to think about the narrow band like that yeah. so it's like massively reducing mm. your audio quality just to be able to fit many carriers close to each other yeah. and this is not the case the other thing is uh the the so-called linear function which is a visicom technology developed I don't know, three years ago, four maybe, uh -huh. and and basically what it does to put it really simple in a simple simple way is uh, there is a sort of second stage of amplification that cuts down the harmonics generated by the different T axes yeah. by thirty dB, which what? means yeah thirty dB down. So basically they are non-existing. This allow you to place your transmitter yeah. one after the other yeah. if you're working narrowband and two hundred fifty kilohertz away one okay. to each other, which means. 40x per megahertz 40x per megahertz so you could get yeah that's more than you need in nah, no, <laughs> way more. Yes. So, yeah but you know the typical but there thing must be some compromise if you're going to be because everyone uh, my understanding is you, you pick a frequency there are certain harmonics that hits yep. and you can see it in a frequency scanner you just see these peaks along the line mm -hmm. and they do have a mathematical kind of they, they work they can be figured yeah, out yeah, mathematically. So intermodulation yeah so you're saying that this has a way of saying to those harmonics Bye-bye, 30 yeah, dB. Yeah, they, they just disappear. <laughs> and it doesn't be... change the sound. <laughs> no, no, no. That dis doesn't affect the sound. The but only thing that is affected, battery. costing battery. Okay. Because <laughs> working in linear is pretty much as 20 milliwatts, the power. Yeah. And uh, it's basically it's like working 100 milliwatts in terms of battery consumption. So oh, okay. Not a massive one, but still have better and Can you say to these, I want these to be 50 or 100? Or... So you, you can work Yeah, yeah from menu, you, it goes from 10, linear 10, yeah. 20, linear 20, 50, 100. So you can right. select by cool. by menu or through the app. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's a really cool feature. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah. As it's got such a wide band, you need different aerial sizes because it can yeah, cover. Of course, of course, yeah. There is no. <laughs> and w wireless booming. Does it have a forty-eight volt feature as well? Well, what we just basically present is the new accessory. It's called Fiat. Uh, uh, sorry, PHA sixty. Yeah. Uh, which is designed actually to be mounted on the boom pole. You got a strap here that allow you basically to attach this to any boom pole. And mm. what you're going to be able to do is just to slide the NTP60 in. Whoop. Sorry. I did it the other way around. <laughs> All right. All right, it goes down. Yeah. 
Oh, nice, Clicks. I cleared this. <laughs> do it again, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Now so the, so the unit goes in there. Yeah. And then well, does yeah, that does the unit provide the powering as well? well? Yeah. Using more batteries. Basically, yeah. Basically, this only generates uh five point five volts, which are yeah. basically able to power the phantom power through this accessory here. Okay. So basically, what you uh -huh. do is just connecting your audio input here. Yeah. You attach this to the boom pole, and from the other connector on the back, you go straight mm -hmm. to your shotgun mic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and this is placed on top of the boom pole. That's the, the key thing because there mm -hmm. is always this problem when using plug-ons. The plug-ons don't have antenna, so the coverage is is poor most yeah. of the times, especially because a lot of users yeah. place the cable between the plug-on and the mic, and yeah. this of course creates uh, some noise issues because the cable becomes sort of the antenna yes. for the plug-on. I I found that the yeah. plug that goes between the transmitter and and the whatever mount suspension you're using, you can sometimes hear a hiss if if you touch it, and I think that's because it's essentially becoming an active part of the. Yeah, exactly. And this eliminates that. This eliminates, eliminates that, that, and then you you know you got the the, mm. the advantage of having one unit that can be used mm. either as a body pack or yeah, as a plug-on. That's so, true. Depending on the on the the way you want to. And I think the last thing we haven't actually mentioned is this is a fully digital transmitter, right? This is this is Wizicom's first proper digital system from well, from well, transmission to reception. It's at ones and zeros. Yeah, well, I mean the the carrier is still FM based, so it's a like analog carrier, but it uh -huh. takes internally they are completely digital. So it, this was done okay. for different reasons. Uh, one is to be retro compatible compatible with all the system. Uh -huh. So we we did want to keep the compatibility, and not to force people to just change the entire system. Oh, so suddenly. you can still use this with your old receivers as well. With old receivers, wow. but also you can use old older transmitter with the new receivers. So it's either way around. So now that we got the MCR yeah. fifty four, for example, mm -hmm. which is our four channel true mm -hmm. diversity portable receiver, yeah. you can still use the MTP forty one forty. So even the very very old version of ten years ago with or the nine receiver years ago, that works with the receiver for that, which is the full designed channel. the full channel. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. So this is the idea. We didn't want just to get rid of all yeah, yeah. the legacy. So we just tried yeah. to fit more. Yeah. Devices, but of course improving the technology. So that's yeah. that's the aspect. Doesn't doesn't have to be a limit. Of course, has to be something that needs to be improved. And we actually didn't see any real advantage in in jumping into mm -hmm. like digital modulation. Full ones and zeros. Yeah, full, yeah, yeah. It didn't for for us for the quality and mm -hmm. the range and all the mm -hmm. things that Bizicom has always said. There was no no. It was not something we desperately needed right. to do at, at all. Well, thank you very much, Leslie. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate that. Thanks so, for yeah, your time. Yeah, cool. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can show some videos with us using the the lecture at the Wizicom <laughs> unit <laughs> uh, when we do the workshop tomorrow here Absolutely. in Madrid. So cool. yeah, hopefully to see you there. Thanks. See ya. Bye bye. Ciao. The Electro Wiz.